Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today we are starting the very highly anticipated fantasy vlog. If you know anything about me, if you've been following my channel for a while now, you probably know I am not a fantasy gal. I have never really read adult fantasy. The only fantasy book that I have read as an adult has been um, A Curse So Dark and Lonely and I really did not enjoy that book. So, I'm giving it another try. I have a lot of people in my life who love fantasy books and they have been waiting for this for so long. I am finally doing it. I'm finally reading fantasy. So in this vlog, I'm going to be reading three fantasy books. I'm not sure of two of them. So my TBR is kind of up in the air. I might ask on Instagram at some point, like do a poll, see what you guys want me to read next. But my first book I know that I am reading is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And this is like all of my real life best friends favorite book. So I feel like I have to read it. And I think this follows a circus that just like magically appears. Like it's not there one day and then the next morning it's like, oh, hey, what's up? Like there was a circus last night. And in the night there's like, I guess circus acts and there's two performers in the circus that are in a competition, like a magical competition. <laughs> I'm sorry, just hearing myself explain the synopsis. I've never said a synopsis like this out loud. Um, but yeah, they are in this competition, but it's like they don't know it. Oh, they don't know the stakes because only one can be left standing. Oh, okay, so it's like a fight to the death. That's kind of interesting. And they tumble headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Am I gonna like this? I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but that's the synopsis. I haven't started it yet. I am about to actually go get my oil changed in my car and get my tires rotated and get my fluids checked because y'all, I have not done that in two years. Sorry to all the straight men watching who were triggered by that sentence. When I told Cameron, my fiance, <laughs> that I didn't um, go to the car place in like two years, cause like it's been COVID. I haven't been driving, I've been staying at home. But when I told him that he was like, yeah, you need to go get your car serviced. So I don't know how long I'm gonna be there. It's like the ass crack of dawn right now, as you can see by this weird lighting. It's really early. Hopefully I can get in there quick but I know I'm probably gonna be sitting in this car place. So I'm gonna start the night circus while I wait for my car and then I'll take you along with the rest of the day. This is my day off, so I don't know what the day will entail. I guess we'll find out together. Okay, I just got to the car place and I, okay, so I work from home. So I haven't driven in rush hour traffic in the morning. Can I just say, if you live in Austin, Texas and you drive on 35 in the morning, you're an asshole. <laughs> And you don't want to catch me out there because I was gonna say like I will do something but I will scream in my car so you better watch out vlog sorry for the weird chin light I hate that oh mm, i hate this lighting anyway just got done at the car place i need to take some photos in this little sweater i have here and then i think i'm gonna go get dessert somewhere it's friday and i always treat myself on fridays fridays are my one day off so oh my god a man is watching me vlog uh sorry for the interruption that was so embarrassing <laughs> anyway i think i'm gonna go to old woman please don't look at me anyway i think i'm gonna go get dessert somewhere after this it's 10 in the morning but you know what i can have a pastry for breakfast that's hey in france don't they do that she's a french girl today 
Okay, girlies, let's take these pics and go. Found this gorgeous little white wall with this greenery <laughs> and just shot some brand photos here. Here they are. Let's go get something sweet. I just got here, lit some candles, set my ambiance so I can continue to read The Night Circus because y'all, I'm 70 pages in and I, I'm hooked. I don't wanna do anything else other than read this book. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm so intrigued by the characters, like the two main characters are like boy and girl that we have that are gonna be like doing this challenge against each other. I really genuinely love both of them so much and it's like we're 70 pages in I don't even know them that well and I already care about them so much and also like I feel like there's supposed to be a romance going on between them but there's already like a little romance going on with the guy so it's like is this about to be a love triangle situation? I'm obsessed with this. It's making me want to like believe in magic. It literally makes me want to believe in magic and it's reminding me of childhood. I feel like I'm connecting to my inner child reading this book. That's my update. I'm absolutely loving it and I wish I could just sit here and read it, but I can't. I have to film some more videos, shoot some more content for Instagram, and I have to do my laundry. So after I do all those tasks, I'm gonna get back to reading and I will update you when there's an update to be had. much later I ended up making bruschetta for dinner it was wonderful <laughs> we opened the wine and I got halfway through the night circus which is just crazy because that is 250 pages which is the length of like many books that I read and I've already read that because every time I tell myself, oh, okay, I'm gonna read to this page and then get up and do the dishes, I get there and then I'm like, oh, well, the next chapter is like 10 pages. So let me just do 10 more pages and then I'll get up and do that. And I've done that like five times, but I just keep reading because it is so good. This book is genuinely beautiful. Like, Every description in here is beautifully written. It is so atmospheric and perfect for the fall time. The descriptions of like the crisp air and drinking cider and like eating caramel corn as you're walking through this circus. Oh my God, this is everything. And I like that it's more just like a magical tale instead of like some kind of intense battle, duel, blah, 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 blah. Because that is what I really did not like about A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Like I could not visualize any part of that book at all. And I need to see a book like a movie in my head for me to be fully invested. And this does that 1000 million percent. So halfway through, this is a five star book for me. Unless something happens that like really breaks my heart or I get totally taken out of the story, I feel like this could be a new favorite. And I did not think I would be saying that in a fantasy vlog. This is crazy. But I'm so, so, so into this. I highly recommend it. Even for people who don't like fantasy because I don't like fantasy and I freaking love this book. So yeah, that is how things are going. I'm so excited. I'm gonna read more. And when I have an update, of course, I will let you know. 
Hi. Hey. Are you gonna help me edit? Are you gonna help me edit a video? We editing. Yeah. I can't with you. I can't with you. It's the next morning and I got to a little bit into part three. So I only have 200 pages left and that is crazy. That means I read like over 300 pages just yesterday, which is wild. I never thought in my wildest dreams <laughs> that I would be reading a fantasy book this fast. I did not think this was gonna be fast paced for me. It's one of the reasons why I've been resistant to reading fantasy because I only really like fast paced books, but I am totally sucked into this right now. The romance has just hit its like peak where they're finally like understanding that they have feelings for each other, which is kind of heartbreaking because there is kind of a love triangle aspect with the guy competitors like girly that he has at home. So that is kind of sad for her. But at the same time, it's like obviously you're rooting for the romance. And I also just like seeing all the different weird little perspectives of the circus performers. Like there are these two twins and they're like children they were born at the circus and they're just so funny to me i love the scenes with them and their cats and there's also a perspective that we're getting of this like normal human boy who is obsessed with the circus and visits the circus often and i feel like i have a sneaking suspicion that that perspective is going to have a role like play some kind of a role in deciding who wins this competition or like something to do with the competition. I don't know. That is what I'm thinking right now, but I'm still really loving it. So I will keep trying to find time to read today. Me and Cameron are going to San Antonio for my brother's football game. So I don't know when I'll have time to read in there, but I will take you along with my day as always. So let's go. I don't have a reading update for you because I've been out and about all day. We're back from the game and we're actually gonna go to like a little um, Christmassy thing. So I thought I would take you along with me. Let's go. Obviously, it is the next day. I had a really fun time last night. After the little Christmas thing, we ended up going out and getting margaritas at this Mexican place. So 
that was fun but because i drank tequila y'all know i did not <laughs> read a ton last night and today i've kind of had a little bit of stuff to do so i haven't really been reading too too much i was actually a guest on gwen's podcast talk bookish to me so that was super super fun i'm so excited to do it again sometime as well in 2022 but our episode should be out by now so i will link it down below we were giving a ton of holiday and winter book recommendations getting ready for december reading plans so i will link that down below definitely support gwen and talk bookish to me podcast but yeah that's kind of what i've had going on and then i had a few minutes to just cook eat chill for a second i did end up reading another 50 pages of the night circus but i don't really have too much of an update i i'm finding with longer books like there's not too much i can update you on when usually i'm reading a thriller and it's like I, i'm done with this book in a blink because it's only 320 pages i have over 500 pages of this book and it's long and it's fleshed out and i have a lot to talk about but they're more like major theme type of thing so i'll just save my thoughts for when i finish the book and i will definitely be finishing it tonight but for right now i'm actually going to be meeting up with sahar from basically bookish reads one of my besties here on booktube so we are going on a double date actually with our manses so that should be really fun i will put in some b-roll of us just hanging out and then when i get home i will be finishing the night circus also i'm reading the night circus kind of like with sahar she's not buddy reading it with me but she's also reading it this month so it should be a fun discussion we kind of have like a newbie and a very seasoned reader's perspective on the same book but yeah we are going to go meet up with sahar and i will see you later Cameron, Cameron just said he was going to read to me. Impasse, Montreal, August, 1902. What you know about rolling down <laughs> in the deep is a brand Stop! <laughs> It is the next morning and I finished the night circus last night and I gave it five stars. I mean, it was just beautiful. There's no other word to describe this book. I know I'm going to be thinking about this book for a long time. The writing style was everything that I wanted. It was beautiful. It was like evading in a way where it would like talk around things. So you knew what was happening in the story without it being expressly told to you. This book is the definition of show me, don't tell me. It was all imagery. I could see it all so clearly. And the descriptions of the circus, the characters, everything was so perfect for this time of year. If you're wanting to read this book, read it now. This like November, early December time is the perfect atmosphere for reading this. And the romance, oh my God, the sacrifice, the, the whole like dueling fighting aspect was completely taken over by the romance, which I really appreciated. Fights and duels and things like that are hard for me to visualize. And I'm also just never really invested in them. So I really, really liked that the romance took center stage, but it wasn't like a, cheesy romance it was like a we are fated to be together and we will sacrifice our lives for each other like that kind of a thing where it felt like very very high stakes I, i'm obsessed with this book so all of you that have been telling me that i should just try fantasy because i was going to be obsessed with the night circus you were right okay all of you were right <laughs> there's just i can't there's nothing else to say it's beautiful. I have nothing bad to say about it whatsoever. I loved the themes of like overcoming the generations before you and like how they set you up, kind of altering that path and how each generation evolves. 
And I love the theme of like being fated to do something and following a passion rather than what other people are telling you. Oh, there were just so many beautiful messages within this book, but it wasn't said. Like it was never said. Like you need to follow your passions instead of listening to what the rule book says. It was just shown in this beautiful metaphor put in front of me and five stars. That was an easy five star. So after I finished this one last night and this morning on my walk, I was listening to Caraval, which I got on audio through my library. And I heard that there were a lot of comparisons between Caraval and the Night Circus. And I'm just not really seeing that right now. Basically, Caraval is following these two sisters and they're kind of like royalty adjacent. Their father is this abusive tyrant. So both of these girls are trying to marry and escape their father. And one of the sisters, Scarlet, has a, an engagement to this count that she's never met. But the other sister is like, whatever, I'm just gonna play around. I'm just gonna like find a new boy toy every day. That's how I'm gonna live my life and cope with this trauma of having a horrible father who doesn't love me. Which is like, go off daddy issues for that girl. <laughs> but there's also this thing called Caraval, which is like this mystical, magical competition where if you can somehow get invited, you can compete for this Rise. And this year, Scarlett is invited to Caraval because she's about to get married and this is like her wedding gift from Legend, the guy who runs Caraval. So she ends up not going <laughs> with her fiance because she's never met him. She's just kind of using him to escape her father. Instead, she ends up going with one of her sister's boy toys because all this stuff happens and I'm not going to explain the entire plot of the book, but basically now her and this random mans are at Caraval and an adventure is taking place. She thinks that her sister went there as well, but they quickly find out that that's a part of the game is that her sister is missing. So the main plot, like what's driving the story is this sister being missing and Scarlett trying to find her, but then there's also this other subplot of like her not really being in love with her fiance and instead she's falling in love with this scoundrel who she ended up with in Carval. My problem is number one the writing style and I don't know if it's because I'm coming right off of reading this but it's all very da 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 Da, 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 da. Nothing is being shown to me. There are no beautiful descriptions of Caraval. It's more like Scarlet walked down the stairs. The stairs were dark and dreary. The stairs were wet. Scarlet slipped. And I, I don't know if I'm just comparing it to this one too much, but it all just seems very straightforward and a little bit elementary. So I find myself getting kind of bored with the writing style. Again, it could just be because I just read this one and it was very interesting and beautiful to visualize, but Caraval doesn't seem like that. So I don't like it as much. And it also seems to have like a very YA kind of voice. I don't like Scarlet as a main character. She <laughs> is supposed to be this sympathetic girl, but I don't really like her. It seems like she makes really dumb decisions and I can just see exactly when she's gonna make a mistake and it's like, okay, bitch, come on. And then immediately after she makes a dumb mistake, she's like, oh, I should have made that. Like, yeah, girl, no shit. Also, <laughs> her love interest, the scoundrel, Julian, I don't like him at all. I think he's completely unlikable. He is a scoundrel, he's gross. And he's supposed to be like, oh, on the surface he looks like this bad boy who's just like a whore and like a scoundrel and he's poor but like underneath he cares about her and he's like sweet and he would sacrifice himself but like i don't like the way that he talks i don't like the things that he says to her i don't like the way that he just acts like this arrogant asshole like to me that is not attractive at all so whatever sweet dumb scarlet is falling for his act i'm just rolling my eyes like come on girl so yeah, I'm not really liking <laughs> uh, Caraval, but I don't absolutely hate it. I'm just annoyed by it. So I'm sitting at like a 2.5.
out of five stars right now. If the plot like picks up and gets really interesting because I do like the like game mystery aspect of this sister being missing, I can see myself enjoying this more. It's just the characters and the writing style that I'm not really connecting with at this point. That's where I'm at with Caraval. I don't remember if I said I'm like 40% of the way through. I have to run some errands and do some things after work today. I'll take you with me and then hopefully while I'm running my errands, I can listen to more of the audio and give you another update. Um, vlog, I was just a feature in someone else's vlog and I'm very scared and I'll tell you in the car when I get there because this is literally... I'm home. I did not want to sit in the parking garage in danger while I told my story. So I just went ahead and drove home. Also, I'm going to tell you the story, I promise. <laughs> but while I was out shopping, I got to about the 65% mark in Caraval. I'm happy to report our main character is less stupid than she has been. But I'm still kind of annoyed. Like, some fun things have happened. Her dress, like, changes color she drank this cider that made the world black and white it was it was cool some of those things i was like okay i get i get the magic this is cool this is fun i like to hear about it but i'm still not liking our main character so that's the tea but on to my story so i am a youtuber i don't like to call myself that but i guess that's technically what i am and this man came up to me while i was at this shopping area and he was like hey i'm a youtuber will you be in my vlog and i was feeling for him i was like bro i know how awkward it is to film in public even just like my little b-roll footage i get insecure when i film it so i'm like sure whatever what do you need me to do and he's like well this is a reaction video like the people on the street kind of videos like a this kind of video <laughs> So I was like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. And this man proceeds to be the most awkward YouTuber of all time. <laughs> like picture me filming my first video. No, actually he was probably more awkward than that. Very awkward man, but whatever. He's trying his best. He proceeds to, I'm gagging too much. He proceeds to present me with a cuffing contract for cuffing season in which uh, if I sign it, I am shackled to him for November through February and I cannot leave the house and I must just do his dishes, cook for him and have sex with him. And I said, this is disgusting. Why are you ambushing women <laughs> and asking these questions? This is misogynistic and horrible. Also, I'm an engaged woman and this is how my man got me. Not by doing this bullshit because this is, is this the 1800s? That's what I told him. So if you see a clip of me on TikTok or this man trying to get this to go viral of me saying, why are you a misogynist? And this man going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Just know I was not really a willing participant in that. I was ambushed. So that's what we have going on. I'm going to cook dinner. I have a couple more errands I need to run. And then I will finally be able to sit down and finish Carvel. Hello vlog, good morning. I am excited to tell you I finished Carvel. Thank God. <laughs> I'm sorry, but thank God I'm done with this book. I did not have a great time. And I know I keep saying it's maybe because I just finished The Night Circus and it was so much better but I did not like it. So I ended up giving it two stars after I finished it last night. I didn't even need to think about it. The whole time I was reading, I was like, this feels like a two star. I'm not enjoying it. There are some things that are interesting that keep me from giving it like a one star, but it felt like a two star book to me. Basically the end really annoyed me. Everything was like not what it seemed, but it wasn't in this 
big reveal, shocking twist kind of way. It was this everything is a lie <laughs> kind of way. And that felt very cheap to me. It felt like the same thing that a thriller does when it's like, oh, and then she woke up and it was all a dream. Like, that is just such a stupid ending to me. It seems like the author was just making it up as they went along. The story was not thought out. Like, it didn't seem like it was carefully crafted to move in this sort of flowing way. It literally seemed like every other page, it was like, this is happening. Oh, just kidding. This is happening. Oh, no way. This is happening. And I did not enjoy that. I also didn't feel connected to the characters at all because I could forgive some of those plot things if I was just really invested in the characters' journeys. But unfortunately, I was not invested in them at all. The two main characters, like the love interest, really, really annoyed me. And in the end, there was just so much going back and forth. It's a lie. It's not a lie. They're dead. They're not dead. Like all of this confusing shit that I just couldn't keep trying track and I didn't really care <laughs> to keep track of what was actually going on. I don't know. The end kind of made the whole story feel pointless. I feel like if it would have had a really wonderful, like beautiful, magical ending with great symbolism, then that could have saved it and made it a three star for me, but I just didn't enjoy it. So two star for Carval. But this morning, while I was getting ready, I started A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. Did you ever think you would see me read this on my channel? I sure didn't. I don't know how I feel about it. If you don't know <laughs> what this book is about, I don't either. Based off what I've heard so far, uh, because I'm listening to this uh, as an audiobook, it follows our main character named Farah, and she is a human. and her little family is giving like Katniss Everdeen vibes. She is the hunter. She like goes out and kills food for her family and they're like really poor and the dad like can't do anything. He just like sits in the house crippled and she takes care of her dad and her two sisters. But one day when she's hunting, she kills this wolf that is apparently like magical or something. And then the fairy people across the wall from her village get mad at her and then they like she's enslaved to them is what I'm gathering or she's just like kidnapped and she has to live with these fairy people for the rest of her life and I will be honest I I, I, I like some of this I, I did like like the first couple chapters when there was no fairy things I liked the feel of it it had the feel of like I said like the hunger games but make it more renaissance festival like just the way that the town was described and going to the market and making coats out of pelts i was like okay renaissance go off like i was living my little maiden fantasy in my little corset with the like big things of beer that's what i was living for but then the fairies came in and i just don't I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't know how to picture these people. What's the difference between a fairy, a fae, and a high fae? I don't fucking know. <laughs> and I'm not gonna look it up. And it really annoys me that Miss Sarah is not explaining to me what this means. She just uses this terminology, like a fae. And I'm like, a what? Like, why don't you explain to me what the hell this is, what it looks like? Because I don't fucking know what I'm supposed to be picturing in my head. And y'all know if I cannot picture a book in my head like it's a movie, it's really hard for me to connect with the book. So I don't know. I just don't know how to picture these things because one second they're described as a beast and the next second they're described as like a human with like elf ears. And then the next second they got claws. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who these things are. Fairy faith, high fae. Can somebody please explain it to me? I don't like to Google things when I'm reading a book. Sarah, you should have explained it to me. So that's kind of where I'm at, at the 20% mark of A Court of Thorns and Roses, but it's not going horribly. I'm definitely enjoying this one a lot more than I was enjoying Caraval at the 20% mark. So there you go. 
I am about to film a very exciting video, my top 25 favorite thrillers of all time. So I'm gonna do that and then go to work all day. And then me and Cameron have some fun things to do. We're like going on a little walk through downtown. They have this thing called like, I think it's called Creek Show. And on the creek, they have all these art exhibitions. So we're gonna walk through there and look at that. It should be nice and chill and just a fun thing to do on a fall night. And then my bestie's coming over and we're going to drink a box of wine. We're supposed to be working on a project for school, but like, is that gonna happen? I don't know. So I don't know when I'll have time to read today, but if I feel the need to update you, you know I'll do it. Okay, I gotta be honest. The not like other girls thing is grating my nerves. But why do I kinda like this? I kinda like the creatures. I never like creatures. Y'all, I'm about to walk out the door, but as I was getting ready in my little leather fit, I got to the halfway point in this A Court of Thorns and Roses audiobook. What kind of shit are you having me listen to? Cause I thought I was gonna like this. I was actually starting to like this. Why did he bite her? I, did they? Or didn't they? <laughs> I don't know. What the hell is this? Y'all are some freaks. Damn. Like, I thought I was. But y'all. Anyway, that's my halfway update. I don't really know what the hell is going on. But I'll let you know what happens, I guess. I'm going to go look at some art. Bye. Hello vlog, the last time I saw you was last night and I gave a very, very brief update of me getting to the halfway point of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I was very unsure of what my feelings were at the halfway point of this book. I feel like I was really not liking our main character. The way that she was like going about things is just annoying. The way that she thinks that she's different and she's not like other girls. I'm like, ew, like I just really cannot deal with that. I don't like her as a main character. But the thing is, I'm at the 75% mark now and I'm kind of conflicted because I really like the story. I've gotten over the fairy thing. Like my weirdness about fairies, that doesn't really exist anymore. I'm like, okay, I'm down with the fairy. I'm down with the fae. I, I get it, I get it. And I'm really liking the story. Like whenever she had to like go back and forth between the worlds, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, they were put under a glamor. Like that to me was very interesting. I love seeing the family dynamics and all of that shifting. I was very interested in that, especially her relationships with both of her sisters. And then when she went back into the fairy world, I really, really, really like the villain that we just met. She is like a badass bitch and I low-key really love her. Kind of want the villain to prevail, can't lie, because she is so much more interesting than Feyre. Feyre can go die. I don't like her failure tasks, queen. Like, <laughs> I... I don't enjoy her as a character, but I do like the story and I am interested. So there's definitely pros and cons. I don't really know where I'm falling right now, like ratings wise, usually I like track where my rating goes, if it goes up or down throughout. And coming from the 50% mark to the 75, it definitely went up, but I don't even know where I was at at the 50%. So like, who knows what I'm gonna feel about this book. It depends right now like how the tasks play out. I like the idea of tasks in a book. Like I like when it's like 
you can see the main characters going through and checking the boxes that just works with my little brain. I guess what I'm trying to say is I like some things. I really don't like others, which is basically just our main character. And that's where I'm at. Okay, I have to, first of all, I have to shoot some reels for Ana Luisa, which is why my hair is up and back so you can see all my beautiful jewelry. Um, and then I have to work and then I'm going to cook dinner immediately after work because I have to shove food in my face before my reservation to go get drinks with my friend after work. It's very busy. I don't know if I'll have time to listen to this audiobook. Maybe while I'm cooking and eating. I don't know. I'll keep you updated. I forgot to update, but basically this king took me out to dinner so I didn't have to cook. Which is good, but also I did not listen to my audiobook while I was cooking, so... Y'all gonna have to wait for this update. Bye. the next day as you can see with all of this stuff back here i am like packed and ready to go home for thanksgiving break this is my last day of seeing clients and doing work before i get to go home and see my family and relax for a week so i'm very excited me and the dogs are packed up and ready to go but before i do I just wanted to hop on here and give you my final thoughts about A Court of Thorns and Roses. And this one actually surprised me. The end had some twists that I did not see coming and I really enjoyed and I'm actually tempted to pick up the second book. I know, I know. I'm not a series girl, I am not a fantasy girl, but something about the end of this book just intrigued me to continue the series. And I obviously don't wanna give spoilers in this video, so don't worry about that. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but just know that the plot was very exciting. At the end, I was on the edge of my seat. I thought I knew what was gonna happen and I was wrong. And the ending ended up being just everything that I wanted. Also, I was less annoyed with our main character towards the end because she kind of had to go into beast mode to be able to survive and like save Tamlin and Lucian and like all these fairy people. But she definitely was still getting on my nerves. Um, I did like Lucian a lot more than any other character. I just thought he was so relatable. Like he would react to things how I would. Like obviously he's a fairy so he'll be like, growling or, or uh, like having weird reactions like not human reactions but like things would happen and pharaoh would be like freaking out like oh my god like i just i'm stuck here and you didn't come to heal me and i'm mad and then lucian would be like grr <laughs> like i don't know i just loved lucian i want him to have his own book he's everything to me Y'all let me know down below if you've already read this series. Is Lucian like a big part of the next few books? Because if so, I will definitely be picking them up. But I can't give this like a perfect rating because there were a lot of things that did annoy me. So I landed on a three out of five stars, which for me, for YA Fantasy, I feel like that is a really great rating. So I hope all the stands out there don't think that I'm being too harsh because I did like a lot of it, but the not like other girls thing and Pharaoh thinking every man on earth, whether he be human or fae or high fae or fairy wants to fuck her. Girlie, you don't sound that cute. Let me just be honest with you. <laughs> also, your personality is atrocious in my opinion. But anyway, other than the not like other girls thing, which is just very YA tropey, I did end up enjoying the story, which really took me by surprise. I did not expect that. So I feel like we've really run the gamut of ratings in this video. I really did not like Carval. I really loved the Night Circus. And then we had one that was right in the middle of those two that I kind of am still conflicted about. So that is how I feel about reading true 
fantasy for the first time for a week in my life. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and seeing the outcome of this little experiment. And don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh,